Book of the Dead. The ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead is famously known as a book containing spells that could be used in the afterlife. In the Mummy film starring Brendan Fraser, it was the very book that allowed Imhotep to rise from the dead and wreak havoc on Egypt, bringing with him the ten plagues. This book is very much real, although the effectiveness of the spells written inside it remains the subject of speculation. Instead of being one single book. It is more of a concept and many versions have been written over the period of about a thousand years. The most sought after version was the one given to Amenhotep, a powerful Egyptian priest who lived around 1400 BC. Sections of the manuscript have laid scattered across the globe and for over a century archaeologists have been working hard to piece them all together. The long wait ended in the 21st century when the long Last missing pages were found not in a dark tomb, but in the basement of a museum in Queensland. They had apparently been donated to the museum over a hundred years ago and kept meticulously in the stores. Number 7. Mummified Moa Remains in 1986, a team of archaeologists were investigating the insides of a large cave system underneath Mount Owen in New Zealand. With very little visibility in the vast network of tunnels, they stumbled across a bizarre object that left them wondering whether their eyes were playing tricks on them. In front of them lay a large dinosaur-like claw with intact flesh and scaly skin. Curious, the team took it back with them for analysis. The results could not have been more astounding. The mysterious claw belonged to a 3,300-year-old prehistoric bird known as the upland moa. For some reason, the mummified claw had been preserved so well it appeared as if the creature had only recently died. Otherwise known by a scientific name, Megalapteryx didinus, the upland moa was a large flightless bird that reached up to 12 feet in height and weighed over 500 pounds. Moa birds were once the dominant animals in New Zealand's forest ecosystem until the arrival of the Maori people who hunted them down to extinction. Scientists have suggested that modern-day revival of the species is a viable idea as their remains contained extractable DNA that could be introduced into chicken embryos interest in the subject has been going on for years and with the advancements in biology and genetics we may one day get to see a live running mower number six the headless vikings of dorset in June of 2009, Oxford archaeologists were excavating land in the seaside town of Weymouth in Dorset, England. The area was about to undergo a controversial road building project, so the archaeological investigation was conducted in order to preserve its historical remains. Shockingly, they discovered the remains of 54 headless skeletons and a pile of 51 skulls within an old Roman quarry. This discovery attracted a lot of attention and studies were made to determine who the remains belonged to and why they were massacred in such manner. The conclusion was that they were Scandinavian Vikings who died sometime during the centuries of war between them and the Anglo-Saxons during the Middle Ages. All of the remains were young adult males and no remnants of clothing were found in the pit. All these clues led to speculation that the men were held captive and were executed while naked. From the look of the bones, the victims' heads were all cut from the front as proud Viking warriors they preferred to face their killers. Historians came up with various theories about the mass Viking grave. Some say the Scandinavian warriors were defeated by a well-organized Saxon army and forced to surrender. Some linked them to the St. Brice's Day Massacre of 1002, ordered by King Ethelred the Unready, and some speculated that they were traitors or defectors killed by their own men. Interestingly, there were three fewer skulls than the number of skeletons found in the pit. A theory is that there were three high-ranking victims who had their heads kept as souvenirs or placed on stakes. 
Number five, vampires of Europe. In recent years, vampire burial sites have been found in many places across Europe, with most of them being in Bulgaria. The graves contain skeletal remains with iron rods impaled through their chests where their heart would have been. A technique believed to be the best way to kill a vampire. In 2012, a heart-impaled skeleton was found in the Bulgarian seaside town of Sozopol, believed to be the remains of the local nobleman Krivich, ruler of the fortress of Sozopol. Recognized as a cruel person, the townspeople pierced his chest with an iron bar to make sure he wouldn't come back to haunt them. A more recent discovery was made in 2014 at Bulgaria's ancient temple of Popperion, where two impaled bodies were found. A weird phenomenon is also seen in other parts of Europe. In 2013, archaeologists discovered four vampire burial sites near the town of Gilwis, Poland, where the heads of the dead had been detached and placed between their legs. This showed that the belief of vampires was widely Widespread, and different regions had different methods to make sure the blood-sucking creatures would not rise again. In 2012, Italian researchers found the remains of what was believed to be a 16th century female vampire buried with a stone brick jammed between her jaws. This was to prevent her from rising up and feeding on the city's plague victims. There was a widespread medieval belief that vampires were the culprits behind Europe's Black Death. Number 4 Ashkelon's dead babies. In 1988, a gruesome discovery was made at the port city of Ashkelon in Israel. While exploring the ancient city's sewers, archaeologists found a large number of small bones. They were initially thought to be the remains of animals like chickens, but further investigation proved that they were human baby bones. In all, they amounted to over 100 babies, making it the largest largest finding of infant remains in a single place. Forensic testing showed that none of the infants lived longer than a week. Although infant mortality rates were high during those days, it appears that the dead babies were intentionally killed. Investigations revealed that the sewer was located directly beneath a former Roman bathhouse. This led to a theory that the babies were born to sex workers and prostitutes who then disposed of them. It was not uncommon for newborns to be killed during Roman times. It was not even considered a crime as infants were not yet considered full humans. A similar finding was made in England in 1912 while excavating in the site of a former Roman villa in Hambledon, Buckinghamshire. Archaeologists uncovered the remains of 103 individuals, 97 of them infants. The most likely explanation is that the place was a brothel and prostitutes had been systematically killing their newborn babies with little to no effective contraception. Unwanted pregnancies would have been very common. Number three, the alien skulls of Mexico. Residents of the small Mexican village of Onavas stumbled upon a shocking discovery while building an irrigation canal. What they found was an ancient burial site referred to as El Cementerio, containing 25 skeletal remains. The most shocking part was that 13 of the skeletons had abnormally long skulls. Unlike any known species on our planet, five were found with mutilated teeth. The freakish discovery led to early speculations that the bodies were those of extraterrestrial beings, similar to the ones seen in Ridley Scott's popular alien film series. However, researchers were quick to suggest that the skulls were the result of intentional cranial reshaping. 
Several ancient Central American cultures had a tradition of forcing their heads into strange shapes. This was done by placing enormous pressure on their skulls since early childhood, for example, by using tightly bound cloths or wooden boards. This makes the cranium grow upwards instead of outwards like it is supposed to, resulting in a freakish, alien-like appearance. Head binding was done either as a ritual practice or to show status as a distinguishing aspect between social groups. The practice is not unique to Central America, with the earliest records of cranial deformation dating back to 400 BC in the writings of Greek physician Hippocrates, and it is believed that Neanderthals might have also been using the technique. Number 2. The Graveyard of Giant Wombats Wombats might be seen as cute and comical animals, but you might think differently if you come across one that's rhino-sized. In 2012, scientists in Australia unveiled the largest graveyard ever found of enormous ancient mega wombats called Diprotodon. There were around 50 Diprotodon remains found, estimated to have weighed an average 2.8 tons each, making them the largest known marsupials to roam the planet. One of the largest and most well-preserved specimens was named Kenny, with a massive 28-inch long jawbone. The creatures are described as pigeon-toed and had big kangaroo-like pouches large enough to fit an adult human. The grave is part of a larger fossil deposit in the remote outback of Australia's Queensland state. It is described as a gold mine for paleontologists with fossils dating back 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. With so many fossils, scientists get to theoretically reconstruct the environment and study how all the creatures lived and behaved and how they possibly went extinct. The mega wombats lived between 2 million to 50,000 years ago. They might have been hunted down to extinction by predators, and some of their carcasses are found to have been torn apart with foreign teeth found within their skeletons. Among the predator remains found in the area are six meter long lizards known as megalania and enormous ancient crocodiles. Megafauna are believed to have evolved to such large sizes in order to cope with the unforgiving prehistoric Australian climate and food scarcity. Number 1. Giant Humans Genesis chapter 6 tells us there were giants in the earth in those days and afterwards. This verse refers to the Nephilim, a giant race of men who, according to the Bible, were perished by the great flood. Scriptural writings of other religions also include similar tales of giant people who once walked the earth. Enthusiastic believers advocate that these stories are true, and in recent years, many stories of archaeological findings of giant men have appeared on the internet. The most famous of these was the story about a giant human skeleton uncovered in the desert during gas exploration in Saudi Arabia. Pictures were included linked with the Islamic story of the Prophet Hud and the powerful giant tribe of Ad. Similar pictures and stories of biblical giants can be found, such as the alleged discovery of giants by archaeologists in Greece. However, none of these claims have been proven, and the scientific community regards them as mere hoax stories accompanied with photoshopped images. There are, however, some real findings of ancient giants, although nowhere as dramatic as the aforementioned stories. In 1890, French anthropologist Georges Vacher de la Pouge found three bone fragments of a human leg in France. The height of the individual, popularly referred to as the giant of Castelnau, is estimated to have been around 3.5 meters, 11 foot 6 inches. Studies show that those bones dated back to the Neolithic period, and according to experts, either represented a very tall race or were the result of morbid growth.